working from home means every day is bring your kid to work day. And if you don't have the right tools and mindset to balance work and family responsibilities, you may end up throwing in the towel. Black Moth Radio gives you the upper hand in starting and managing your ideal lifestyle while creating your own business, doing what you do best, and doing it from home. So, grab the nearest ink pen and prepare to take notes, because this show is packed with discoveries, tips, and experiences to help you through your journey. Let's begin with our host, Robin Bull. Hey everybody, and welcome to Thursday Thoughts. I am your host, Robin Bull, and um... You know, this is the podcast where we make work from home work for you, and it's always bring your kid to work day. Today is November 16th, 2017, 2017th. I am distracted by my incredibly attractive co-host and husband, Danny Bull. And today, um, like I said, Doing the Podbean thing, I said that on Facebook, and of course we are broadcasting live on Facebook on the fan page, facebook.com slash therobinbull. There's also a Twitter, twitter.com slash therobinbull, and the main domain, confessionsfromthecouch.com. So, uh, my husband is going to tell you about an event that he has coming up that he's using his proceeds of ticket sales to support a specific charity. And then we're going to talk about the seven things you have to learn to say nicely when you're self-employed. So, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to turn it over to you. Okay. Let you talk um, about your event. And if the video quality is poor, sorry, that's Facebook thing. Or it's this webcam for this particular laptop. Because it doesn't act like this on the phone. Who could join? It's Clay. It's Clay. Hi, ah, Clay. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so December 2nd, Submission Hunter Pro 20 is coming to Oklahoma City. Uh, I'm competing, and I'm selling tickets for this event. Um, right now, I have a general admission and table tickets. <laughs> um, but anyway, so uh, the event's December, 20, uh, December 2nd. If you've never been to a submission tournament or a jiu-jitsu or wrestling tournament, anything like that, it's this will be similar except it's a bunch of one-on-one matches. What will be uh, happening is there's 10-minute rounds. Basically, nobody wins until somebody gets tapped. Or broken. Or broken. Or choked. Unconscious. Something's, go- something's going to happen to cause them to want to leave. Um, but... Anyway, so my t- what I'm doing something different from everybody else. We sell tickets in order to make money. Um, my ticket sales are actually going to the charity Fighting for Autism. And that charity itself is an amazing charity. What it does is it, it helps needy families with therapy, therapeutical equipment, things like... Um, you know, giving these children the help they need for the sake of maybe their parents can't afford it or maybe they, they have insurance and they're, they've maxed out their insurance, but they're still needing to get their child additional therapy, get their children some sort of therapy equipment. A lot of these things are really expensive. You can go buy a weighted vest from Walmart for $40 if it's you know, so has gold. Even have them? Yeah, That's if so it has sweet. Gold's Gym on it, it's like forty dollars. Oh, but yeah. if you go to any place that has these weighted vests, they're the same size, same build. You have to buy it online, and it's for autism, and it's ninety nine dollars. You know, plus your shipping. So a lot of these people are getting their the prices jacked up just because it's therapy instead of you know, just being a regular item. They have what is basically a vibrating massage ball that you can go buy in the toy section for 20 bucks. But if you go look on these therapy equipment websites, that $20 thing is now $60, $75. Mm -hmm. So fighting for autism really helps out these needy families and getting them the equipment they need, the therapy they need, gets these children into martial arts which which if anybody is 
ever had a child with ADD, ADHD, they know that martial arts is a, or just any extracurricular activity is a godsend for them, that it helps them to focus, helps them to, it reduces their energy level for the next day. It, it does all these great things for these children who are just having this hard times in school and, you know, their everyday life. So if you, if you want to, if you're wanting to pick them up in Oklahoma City, you can find me every evening at National Martial Arts, except for next week. They're going to be closed all next week for Thanksgiving. Um, but you can find me there. You can find me online. You can go to the fan page, the Robin Bull, uh, Facebook.com slash the Robin Bull. Send me a message if you're within the metro area. I'll meet meet up with you. If you're outside, if you're outside of the metro, Oklahoma City metro area. But you're still wanting to get tickets from me um just let me know we can mail we'll mail it to you um you can also buy them online at garcia promotions that's g-a-r-c-i-a uh garcia promotions.com or mike m-i-k-e the truth.com um the proceed as long as you put in my name in the comments or the support section, the money goes to, the portion of the ticket sales goes to Fighting for Autism. And that's, the event itself is actually going to be at the Cox Convention Center in downtown Oklahoma City. Great venue if you've never been there. It's a great place. It looks amazing. But I've got tickets. I've got general admission and I've got table tickets left. General admission are 35. Table tickets are 75. Um, the second First and second row seating. I don't remember the price, but I am out of those. So definitely hit me up or go to the GarciaPromotions.com to buy a ticket. Show support for me, which is support for fighting for autism. Absolutely. And that's my spiel for that. And um, what time for do the fights start? I think they start at seven, if I remember correctly. I think that's one thing that earlier. We never even talked about for yeah, it, it's an easy thing. So, um, because that day they're doing just a regular jiu-jitsu tournament for kids and everybody else who's not doing the professional jiu-jitsu. So, as soon as that's over, which I think it ends at six, they start letting people in the door for the submission hunter that night. So, it, great. And that one is actually free if you just want to go and watch it, or you get there early. Um. You know, if you're coming from out of town, if you're coming from Tulsa, if you're coming from Lawton and you get there early, don't think you just have to sit outside and wait in the middle of downtown Oklahoma City on Saturday with all the people getting ready to go to the bars. No, you can just walk in the building, go watch, you know, the people compete in jiu-jitsu and get ready for the evening. They'll let you in for free. And then you Pretty just show your ticket whenever. To stay. So they yeah, then you just show yeah. your ticket to stay or pay to stay. Sweet. Yeah. So that's. That's his spiel. Yeah, that, that's spiel. my first spiel. 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 Okay. Um, so now, are you ready to have some fun? Always. <laughs> we are going to talk about the seven things that you have to learn how to say nicely to other people when you're self-employed. And apparently, I'm having a really shitty hair day. <laughs> are you ready for the first one? Me too. <laughs> Here's the first one. First thing you have to learn how to say nicely is... That sounds fucking awful. <laughs> you have to learn how to say this nicely. And you also learn, you have to know how to write it nicely in an email or in a response to a message. Um, I probably send that message out more often than what most people would think. I've sent it to some big name companies too, but not in those words. It's normally a, sounds like a fantastic project, but unfortunately I'm really not the fit. I'm not the right person for your project. I just say that sounds awful. <laughs> I'll do it. That, that's typically how I deal with things. No, I, I usually, you know, find a nice way to say it. So, um, Oh, I don't. Because like we've talked about before, especially in what I do, you know, if you say the wrong thing, you're going to develop a reputation. You're not going to have any work. Well, yeah, but I don't so. know what you do. Uh, there is a particular level of, I guess, saltiness that <laughs> people are accepting of contractors. They just look at you and they're like, you're right, it sounds awful. That's why I hired you to do it instead of me doing it myself. Oh, okay. 
Well, sometimes I find out in the midst of a project how someone wants something done, and I have that thought of, oh god, that sounds awful. Um, so then I have the task of explaining to them what they're doing wrong and why it's terrible. So the thing is, though, I can't say that sounds fucking awful. Instead, I focus on more polite terms such as that's a that's an idea. That's certainly a way to do it. But here are some best practices that you may be more interested in pursuing for your project. What do you think of these? <laughs> I mean, that's all... great. The compliment sandwich with a. <laughs> With redirection. Yeah, well. Oh, that, that sounds great jumping off that cliff. Let, let's, I got an idea. Instead of that 200-foot cliff, let's go jump off this 2-foot cliff. See? <laughs> Still works. Yeah. So that's the first one. You have to learn how to tell people that their ideas are awful, but without sounding like an asshole. So, number two. Something else that I say it out loud quite often at home when I'm reading an email. Or a proposal? <laughs> Stop wasting my damn time. <laughs> that, that's another one. <laughs> I, and I get that a lot. And I get it either at the beginning of proposals where people ha want to have this long, drawn-out conversation about something that really... A five-minute conversation or a quick email exchange would suffice. And I also have to use something a little bit nicer when I have people who seem to think that busy is somehow productive, so they want to have 5, 10, 15 meetings a week, um, and, oh, this will just take five minutes, and the next thing I know, it's like... 30 minutes of your day is at wasted. At least, at least, and they haven't even gotten to what they want to talk about. So you have to learn how to tell people not to waste your time, and you have to do it in a way that doesn't make you sound like a raging bitch. Um, so for me, stop wasting my damn time usually comes out as... I understand this meeting, phone call, whatever is important to you. Unfortunately, my schedule is full. Is there any way that we can talk about this later in the week? Or I have 15 minutes and I give them a date at a time. I, I don't give them enough wiggle room to, you know, suck up my time. But, but then, though, you have to be willing to enforce that time limit. You know, when that 15 minutes is done, you have to be like, okay, Recap, this is what we talked about, this is where we're at, and um, I have to move on to other things now. Yeah. Because um, they will, they will suck that time right out of you, and it's awful, it's terrible. Yeah, yeah, I've had, I've had clients that sit there and just want to chat for an hour. And you but, then, but then they get mad at you whenever... You're behind. Yeah, they're like, why is this not done yet? Why in God's name do you keep talking? Yeah, why are you still talking to me? You want this done, shut up and leave me alone. Number three is another personal favorite. Okay, all of these are favorites because they're things that I deal with, like, constantly. And yeah, daily. Number three, with that budget, are you high? <laughs> <laughs> I cannot tell you how many times that I've had people who come to me and they want this, you know, they want the perfect web content or blog content, and they want it keyword optimized, and they want me to write these little snippets for their Facebook page, their, you know, Instagram, Twitter, um, LinkedIn, Google+. Plus. And, and the thing is, all of those have different types of content that work better than others. Um, and so that's more of my time. But the thing is, like, they want to pay something really low. Like, I've had people offer me a dollar for 1,000 words. <laughs> <laughs> and um, What is that, a tenth of a cent? Per word? Roughly? It's, it's really cheap. Yeah. It's crazy. And I've had that happen from people who maybe they just don't have an idea of how to properly budget, and that's one thing. And I've had it from people who do it with the attitude of, you're just writing, there's nothing hard about what you do. And my response is, well, if it's not hard, then you can do it yourself. Uh, In you, the nicest way possible of saying that. Oh, not always. It depends on who I'm dealing with. Uh, my, my favorite is always the... Uh, oh, actually, just the other day I had somebody... They needed brick repair call, and they were like, Hey, can you, do, can you repair? It was close to about... It was basically like a third of the house. The brick was breaking off and falling apart. And they were like, How much is this going to cost me? 
I ran the numbers and everything, and if I remember correctly, it was about eight hundred dollars. So I was like, "Well, it's going to be about eight hundred dollars for me to do it." They're like, "That seems a little steep. Can you do it for four fifty? I'm like, "You can't even buy the damn brick that you need for four hundred fifty dollars, <laughs> much less the concrete, the mortar, to, in order to put between the brick." But yet, you want me to do this for four hundred fifty dollars, but you don't want to give me the materials. Hmm. Do you ever get the "Shouldn't it be a labor of love?" Because you know people tell you you should do what you love. Love what you do. You'll never work a day in your life. Well, that's nice. But I do. That's what December 2nd for. <laughs> the electric company still wants their money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, they want their money. The IRS wants their money still. Apparently, you can't pay in love. Apparently not. <laughs> so. <laughs> but I paid you in love. Doesn't that count? <laughs> I love the fact you kept my lights on for me. So how you approach the whole budget issue ultimately will depend on who you're dealing with how much knowledge they have and I have taken on projects that I thought were really neat for less than I should have but it was because I wanted to um, I'm I've said this a million times in many podcasts books articles whatever don't work for slave wages because the way I do things is I started out with a really really low rate not so low that I couldn't pay at least some of the bills um, but once that was full, I upped my rate, and then I started procuring clients who would pay the new rate. And because not all of your clients will last forever, even if they're really, you know, they're paying you practically nothing, you won't necessarily hear from them again anyway. So you just kind of work your way up. But in the meantime, you have to make sure that the work you're taking, that people, A, they know, they understand the budget. They have a budget, and if they can't come up with a budget, don't work with them. That's how I feel about it. Um, but, you know, you got to talk to them. And, and if you really aren't going to take something because of budget concerns, just tell them, no, you're not interested. Thank you for your consideration. Not going to work for me. Number four. I just always say, sorry, I can't do that. I have... Um, or, or I'm a complete jackass, and I'm just like... <laughs> You want me, like I did with the guy the other day, that's not even going to buy the material. What the hell you want me to do? Most of my interaction with people for writing comes through email or Upwork Messenger. And so generally when they're like, no, really, this is all I can afford, it's, well, I can't do it for that amount. Um, here are some suggestions. Good luck. Yeah. You know, I, I try to be nice about it. If, if they're being nice and I genuinely feel like, they can't do anything better. They're not necessarily trying to be cheap bastards. I just give them some advice and tell them how to do it or tell them. Oh, that is a little different, but in my experience, it's just because people are cheap. <laughs> people don't want to spend money. Well, money's expensive. Just, you know, life's expensive. <laughs> it is, money is expensive. You, you can go to jail for money laundering. And then get all sorts of fines. I launder my money all the time. I mean, I, I stuck like $20 in the washing machine the other day. <laughs> Number four. That Who was th funny. Come on. <laughs> all of you need to be laughing. I gave you a pat on the leg. Yeah, but everybody out there needs to be laughing. The number four thing that you have to learn how to say nicely when you're self-employed, who in the hell do you think you're talking to? No, no. Yeah. yeah. You will get a lot of people who will talk to you all sorts of ways and in my experience it's generally because they think that since you're self-employed and that's how they look at it so with this sneaky quotation yeah, marks yeah. self-employed they think that because of this that you're desperate yeah um so that's like the number one thing so they will come at you all sorts of crazy ways this is what you're going to do this is how you're going to do it um and i'm just like hmm I don't think you know who you're talking to. Generally, it depends on how it all started to begin with. Sometimes I will gently redirect them and remind them that I am not their employee. I've also been that asshole to send them a link to the IRS webpage that shows them the difference between an employee and a contractor and say, look, if this is what you're doing, then you need to give me these benefits. That usually shuts them up because a lot of the times people think that because you're an independent contractor for them, they can tell you what to do, how to do it, and that's not necessarily true. And in fact, that can actually make you an employee instead. That doesn't give you grounds to just start being a douche to everybody, though. It, it doesn't, and so a lot of the times I end up going don't, with the. Seems like you're frustrated. Is there something going on that I need to know about? Yeah. 
Speak nice. Yeah, don't don't be that guy. Don't be that guy or girl that's going out going. Oh, you mean you you want to? They just simply ask you, "Hey, do you have free time to talk?" Oh, you mean I'm your employee now? No, jerk. And this is the thing: the more time you spend carrying on unnecessary conversations, especially with people who treat you like shit, the more likely it is they're going to a continue to treat you like shit. Um, but or B, you're point, going to be more accepting of it. Yeah. And the thing is, at some point, if you sit there and take it and take it and take it and don't draw a line, you're going to get pissed off at some point and haul off and say something. And then they're going to take that and they're going to try to use it against you to give you a bad reputation or say that you're a jerk and that you're not good at what you do or whatever. Um, when in reality, they kind of brought it on themselves. And so that's that's one of the reasons why I say that you really have to know how to say these things the nice way and so generally for me it's you seem upset you seem frustrated are we not on the same page with something um, unless they honestly think that somehow I'm an employee and then I redirect them from that and explain to them the difference between an employee and a independent contractor yep yep number five Woohoo! I say far more than I'd like <laughs> you're kidding right <laughs> And the thing is, number five comes up, at least for me, most often. You're like, I'll, I'll, I'll get these guidelines from a client. They'll tell me what they want, what their end result is. Oh, or my favorite, they'll tell me the end result they want. I'll say something like, do you have anything particular you want me to do to get you from A to B? You know. So I, I like to try to avoid problems before they happen. Um, oh no, do it, do it whatever way you think is best. Great. Sounds fantastic. Mm. Until you're almost done, they're still getting the results they need, then all of a sudden they come back at you with like this list of shit they want you to do. Or that yeah. you didn't do that they've now decided they want because they read like a five minute article and they, suddenly they they're read. an expert. <laughs> what they did is they read something on BuzzFeed and they're like, oh, wait, now I'm an expert. No, you're an idiot. That's what you are. So, yeah. Don't listen to BuzzFeed. So, you get the, you're kidding, right? Like, you're going to come back to me with this now. Um, so, generally, how you respond to that and how you learn to say it nice, again, depends on your situation. Um, I usually will tell them, well, your deadline is whatever day. I always deliver before deadlines for the most part. Um, so this is your deadline. The problem is if we implement all of this, you're not going to get your product or your service on time. You know, you're not going to get your final result when you said that you wanted it. So that's why you're kidding me, right? It, it's just a nice way of saying, look, I'm acknowledging the fact that you've now decided you want something different, but if you want to still meet your deadline, you can't have it. <laughs> yeah. Um, I got, I really got nothing on that one. Nothing really to add. No, no funny stories. The well, closest thing I've got is that this house that we bricked a long time ago. And they wanted rock in the corners. Like rock and, and roll? No. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll go with that. At first, it was like two feet of rock from the corner. But they come back after we get done with like three of the like eight walls on this house. And they go, I think I want three feet. And we're just looking at them like, you're kidding, right? You want us to take off one foot of rock. How the hell do you want us to do that? <laughs> that's about as close as I got. And that, that's about the only story I got for that. Because we just kind of looked at them like, that's cute. I don't know how you're going to do it. Well, you know, what's similar, although I didn't write it down, so this is going to be like a bonus. Ooh, bonus. Say it nicely. Honorable mention. Except it sounds nice. Except you'll remember when I used to say this, it was actually sarcastic. Sure, why the hell not? Oh god. That will get <laughs> that could get you a lot of money, but it can also can get also you a get lot you, of trouble. Yeah, it, be careful with that one, although it works. I uh, I Didn't you you adopted that from Grant Cardone, didn't you? Uh, it was the, the say connect. yes to everything. Yeah, say yes to everything. But when I said sure why not, I was actually being sarcastic in an email and I totally forgot that, you know, the person reading it wouldn't necessarily <laughs> wouldn't necessarily catch your sarcasm? Yeah. Yeah. That was a busy month. That was. <laughs> now, though, now, 
I only say yes to what I want to say yes to, but I still find myself going, sure, why not, to yeah. some clients. Okay, yeah. Here's what you need to know. <laughs> you, you can say these things. You better mean that one, though, if you say it. If you're not on the phone with them. If you say while well, you're on the phone with them, there's a good chance, one, you're either going to get fired, or two, they're going to sit there and take you seriously, and, well... Good chances for half of this is you're going to get fired. <laughs> Are you ready for number six? You're going to love number six. Yeah. You're yeah. peaking. <laughs> of course I'm fucking peaking. No, you're not entitled to free work. Doesn't matter for friends. Doesn't matter for family. Doesn't matter if I've worked for you in the past. Doesn't necessarily mean you're entitled to free work. Um, but there's a right way and a wrong way to say it. Because the thing is, if you're trying to say that to some long-standing clients, particularly if they have really good connections that you would like referrals to, there's a right way and a wrong way to say that. Um, you can't necessarily just say no. <laughs> you can say no, you just have to do it the right way. For those of you who are listening on Podbean, <laughs> Danny is making faces into the camera for this is the live feed. This, this is why I'm not allowed in public. <laughs> Um, but if, if you're trying to say no about the free work thing, the best way to do it is just tell them that, no, I would love to help you, but I really don't have time for that right now. But here are some suggestions that you can use on your own. They can't really see it, but I'm flexing my pec muscles. We can see it in the camera. <laughs> So, uh, how, how do you say nicely, no, you're not entitled to free work? Except saying it to me, because that doesn't count, because I have papers. <laughs> Just say no. <laughs> I don't normally give people an excuse on why I can't do things. I mean, if there weren't free work, I'd just say, mm, no, I but don't you know, have time. That, that again, you see, but there it is, that I don't have time. That's basically what I say is. Sorry, I, I, I don't have time to take on any more projects that, right now. That or actually what I'm saying 99% of the time is, yes, I can do that, but it's going to cost extra. But, I mean, that what, what if you're asking for shut up. free work? No. Um, I don't you could do fall. this for me, Danny Bull. We're friends. For free. I can do that, but it's going to cost you. <laughs> it's going to cost you more than nude pictures. I had a guy offer me nude pictures one time. <laughs> I think he was joking, but I don't know. He might not have been. He may not have been. I don't know. Um, my best he friend my does friends. online dating, and you know, she gets like she opens her profile for like five minutes, and she gets like fucking assaulted <laughs> with unsolicited <laughs> dick pics. I told her the other day, just like go get a hot dog out of the freezer, and take a short video or a picture of her breaking it in half. Yeah. I'll stop that shit real quick. You ready for number seven? Things you have to learn to say the right way when you're self-employed? Sure. I'm not drunk enough to deal with you right now. She says this to me all the time. <laughs> no, he's a good husband. She says this to me all the time. <laughs> um, so usually it was something like that. Honey, I ran over the dog with the lawnmower again. I'm not drunk enough to deal with you right now. Okay. Uh, in that case, it's like, well, you know, one of the kids is just going to drag another dog home soon enough. <laughs> yes, they do. He brought one dog home for Valentine's Day. I'm, for those who don't know, I'm pointing at my husband. I'm saying that because this will go on Podbean later. He brought home... An Akita Lab mix for Valentine's Day, right after we got oh, married. Christmas. No, she was born around Christmas. She was oh, about two months old when you brought her home. That's our beloved Pandora. She's a dick. <laughs> She's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> and then, about 18 months ago, I'd say. Yeah. Had them almost two years. Marchish of last year. Yeah. We went to PetSmart, and they were having an adoption. And I saw the saddest little blue pit bull in a cage you've ever seen in your life. But I couldn't take him home then. I didn't have the cash. So the next day, he's at work and can't get a hold of me. You know, he's like texting me and I'm not answering. I don't remember what I was doing. I was probably working to have my ringer off. 
But then, like, about the time I turn it on, he messages me and says, Hey, you want to go get a puppy? And I made him take me to the animal shelter where I adopted that poor, sad, little blue pit whose name is Crom. <laughs> and he is my favorite. He likes to try to get in my lap. And then, um, July? Yeah. I was trying to think of the right month. In July... Or now a 17-year-old son was given a puppy this from is me his... This staring at you, Jacob, in case you see this. <laughs> from his now fiancé. And um, he was supposed you, to have you, had... This is actually your fault, more than any, anybody else's. He had his biological father's permission to keep the dog over there. Something happened, whatever. Suddenly, I have to go get this dog and bring it here. Um, so now our son's dog who is half deer head chihuahua and half Kimmer Feist, whose name is dog. Athena. It's a pansy. Lives here. She said the shit beat out of her by Pandora a couple times and has lived to tell the tale. Don't fuck with Panda. And her and Crom, they're like this. They're like best fucking friends, those two. So. I still don't like that dog. I'm telling you, though, something happens to one of them. Just mention it. Somebody's going to drop off another dog. Like, I have to draw the line and say no more pets. That's true. So. So, anyway, the I'm not drunk enough to deal with you, now that we've gone off on that tangent, actually comes from the fact that I had clients in the past who are very, very demanding. You will have clients that don't, <laughs> don't care what field you're in. That. <laughs> Especially when you're first starting out because you can't, like, you don't really have a lot of choices. These are the people that come to you, and if you want to, like, build up your record, you got to take them. Yeah. yeah. But, it, you know, they, you don't draw these lines of, you know, don't fucking call, text, email me after X o'clock, or you're not going to get a response till the following business oh, yeah. day. Like the the Greek people that you had. That That's actually where the I'm not drunk enough to deal with you sentence yeah. came from. Yeah. See, I say that to people most of the time. They just oh, go. Oh, look. Hi, Bree. Your fault. <laughs> you just missed the part about the dogs. So, that's what's your fault, the dogs. <laughs> Our anyways. future daughter-in-law just joined and she's watching. So. Um. Anyways, we're. we're the, I'm not drunk enough to deal with you. Yeah. See, if I say I'm not drunk enough to deal with you, people just go and get me beer. And I'm like, what the hell? I don't even drink. Hey, I've been known to barter for bottles of good hard liquor. Yeah, but you don't drink beer, and I, neither do I. I know. So. Beer's awful. Uh huh. But basically, you you have to learn how to say, I can't deal with you right now, and you have to learn how to say it in a way that's nice. Which generally for me is something to the effect of, I'm really busy right now, can you email me and we can talk about this later? Yeah. Um. <laughs> He's like, I've got nothing. I don't, because <laughs> I can always say I'm kind of busy right now, and they just keep talking, because it's their house. <laughs> till, till they don't get their shit down. Time. Yeah, and then they get mad, and I'm like, well, maybe if you shut up and leave me alone for ten minutes, I could have got this done for you. Okay, so to recap the seven things real quick that you have to learn how to say nicely when you're self-employed, number one. That sounds fucking awful. Number two, stop wasting my damn time. Number three, with that budget, are you high? Number four, who in the hell do you think you're talking to? Number five, you're kidding, right? Number six, no, you're not entitled to free work. And number seven, I'm not drunk enough to deal with you. Anything else you'd like to add to the list of things that you need to know how to say nicely? Would you like to go over your spiel one more time for your fight? Sure, why not? Okay, one more time, in case any of you missed it. December 2nd, Cox Convention Center. Uh, I will be competing in Submission Hunter Pro. And if you, um, I encourage everybody, buy tickets. Go watch. Uh, buy a ticket even if you're not going. Um... But put in your sport for me, Danny Bull, B U L O. Uh, Clay has it, has commented on exactly how to spell my name. 
It's pinned to the top of the live feed, by the way, for so, anyone who wants to go to facebook.com slash the Robin Bull and watch the video later. So if you uh, show support for me, the money portion of the ticket sales goes to Fighting for Autism. And like I said earlier, Fighting for Autism helps needy families out with therapy, therapy equipment. Um, it also helps get these children into martial arts in order to teach them self-discipline and overall self-defense because if any of you have ever seen the poor kid in New York that got kidnapped for like four days who was autistic, crap like that needs to stop. And I think the best way to do it is teach them what to do in those types of situations. Um, you know, outside of, you know, if they're capable, if they're capable of calling the police, call the police. But sometimes you can't do that. But uh, if you need to, hit, hit us up on Facebook, the Robin, Facebook.com slash the Robin Bull. Um, message me through Facebook. It's easy to find me. It's the Danny Bull. It's got the picture of the actual Submission Hunter poster with my face on it. It's fairly hard to forget. But it's so, like, mangled. Um <laughs> Or you can go to Garcia Promotions. It's G A R C I A promotions.com or MikeTheTruth.com and buy your tickets online there. Um, you can find me every evening at National Martial Arts. You can come there and pick up your tickets from me personally. Or if you want to meet up somewhere, I'll meet. I can meet up with you and we can do do it that way. If you're outside of the Met, Oklahoma City metro area right now. I can still... We can mail them. Yeah, I can still get them mailed to you, and we, we can take care of it that way. So, definitely, hit us up, buy the tickets, show up to the event. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a great event, and everybody needs to be there. What time does it start? Doors open at 6. I think the first one goes on at 7. There we go. So, anything else you want to add? I got the lovely bunch of coconuts. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, make sure you follow us on Facebook.com slash The Robin Bull, Twitter.com slash The Robin Bull. You can find us on Podbean, blackmothradio.podbean.com. And, uh, of course, confessionsfromthecouch.com, where you can join 1,600-plus subscribers and stay up to date with what's going on. Thank you to those who tuned in live on Facebook. <laughs> we will talk to everyone again soon. Hopefully, you're walking away from this podcast with a plan to implement the tips you've heard, a great attitude, and you subscribe to Black Moth Radio to ensure that you never miss any of the goods. Whether you're a hopeful work-from-home freelancer or you're well-settled into your work-from-home lifestyle, we hope you've learned something that you can use. If you're ready to more about the work from home lifestyle, check out cellfy.com slash Bull. Questions, comments? Let Robin know by going to facebook.com slash Bull or confessionsfromthecouch.com. Thanks for listening. Join us next time and keep learning.